and uh, so let's get started so what is the basic thing behind the absorption what is the basic concept behind it suppose you have a gas mixture which uh, it has uh, gas ammonia okay and uh, it has air so you have ammonia plus air a gas mixture now what you want to do it you want to recover the ammonia you want to remove the ammonia from this air mixture so and uh, we also know that uh, water okay so the water has this property that it only absorbs the ammonia gas not the air it only absorbs the ammonia gas so that's the basic concept so if we contact the liquid liquid water basically water and this mixture then only ammonia will be get absorbed and the uh, air will be air will get free of ammonia so that's the basic concept behind the absorption so how we do it uh, practically we have uh, towers we have packed bed towers and uh, using these towers we do the absorption process what happens over here that liquid is liquid we feed liquid from the top and we feed gas from the bottom which is the gas mixture which has one carrier plus the solute okay so carrier plus solute and the liquid is basically the solvent we want to remove the solute and uh, we have selected the solvent such that it will only absorb the solutes so that's research we have done and we have the column right now so before we're gonna start what we're gonna do here another concept number two concept number two is very important uh, here so earlier we have what we have seen what we, we have seen that only ammonia is getting absorbed so in the gas stream if you have suppose g number of moles per second are coming so g number of moles are coming and uh, the composition of ammonia in it is suppose less small y1 so mole fraction of ammonia in this g mole is this in this gas stream is y1 okay so now tell me how many moles of air are present in this gas mixture okay so there's your question okay so it's uh, i hope you have solved this question so if you haven't not then again let me tell you what is it so g moles per second of the mixture is coming which is mixture of air plus ammonia or for your case it can be anything so one thing is solute and one this thing is the carrier okay so carrier plus solute you have total flow rate is g and the mole fraction of solute is y small y remember small y so what will be the mole fraction or oh, sorry so mole molar flow rate of the carrier which will call it by gs it's gonna be g into 1 minus y simple as yeah, simple as that okay so 1 minus 5 is mole fraction of carrier and mole fraction what is what are the mole fraction moles upon total number of moles so total number of moles are capital G and mole fraction is 1 minus 5 so GS will be so this is gonna be the mole per second okay this mole per second okay okay so GS is it okay similarly for the liquid side okay so suppose the liquid flow rate is L capital L also mole per second and uh, there is also solute already present in it suppose some ammonia is already absorbed in it somehow and its concentration over here is suppose the x2 and uh, here y you can call it y1 it will be easy and I will tell you why we are doing it so it's x2 then can you tell me that what will be ls ls means the solute free solvent flow rate so it's gonna be l into 1 minus x2 okay and the gs gonna be like 1 minus 5 1 okay so 1 minus x2 have you seen what happening the liquid entering also have some more some small amount of this ammonia or we can say solute already present and we have found the ls like that so these two equation we have and uh, the basic thing we have over here now here comes the concept concept number two 
what the concept is that we have seen that only solute is getting transferred from gas phase to the liquid phase but the carrier the gs the molar flow rate of carrier will remain same because suppose you have entered 100 moles of gas okay and the mole fraction was like 10 percent of 10 percent again 10. so we have 90 moles of carrier and 90 mole entered and 90 mole will also leave because only solute is getting transferred the carrier is not getting transferred the carrier molar flow rate or the moles of carrier will remain same in inlet and also at the outlet similarly the solvent is not going into the air so solvent in the solvent also the ls will remain same so this ls and gs will remain same throughout the column that's a very important concept which you have to keep in mind when whenever you see something like this where only one component is getting transferred then in such, such cases you can always use this concept number two okay now when you have learned the concept number two now we have to define some terms which is the mole ratio and if we define at the inlet and suppose uh, remember one thing that the bottom is defined as one just we are giving this number and the top is two so how to remember top two so t t same okay top two and one is the bottom okay so here suppose x2 ls will be the same but uh, here you can will call it l2 like that and the liquid which will come here will be called as l1 okay okay and like x1 okay like that so we have now defined the mole ratio which is small y upon 1 minus y but what is it actually it is the mole of solute upon the mole of carrier so we are defining like first here was the mole fraction which was mole of solute upon mole of total mixture but here we have mole of solute upon mole of carrier okay that's how we have defined it so y1 if you have to calculate suppose mole ratio at the entrance y1 how you will calculate you will calculate it by y1 minus 1 upon 1 minus y1 if you will calculate you will find that it is the ratio similarly if you have to find this capital x1 you're gonna like okay so i have written everything for you like capital y1 capital y2 capital x1 capital x2 it's gonna be so simple and how to remember if you dip, if you forget like which formula to use and like that so remember that the mole ratio will be greater than the mole fraction okay so y1 upon 1 minus y y1 will be there minus and you can go uh, like here from here this formula you can also make another formula which is if you have to calculate small y1 from capital y1 okay so same formula you can make like small y1 if you just rearrange it you will come to this conclusion also so small y1 will be capital y1 upon 1 plus capital y1 what is capital y1 mole ratio how to remember small y1 is small so it should be small so here will be plus just to remember okay capital y1 is big so it minus so it will make it bigger okay we have so far so good we have done covered this thing okay now we're gonna move to the next stage where we are now able to calculate the material balance how we can do it so what's our scene over here liquid is coming with the flow rate ls which is the ls we have defined over here yes this flow rate is ls total flow rate will you can calculate now and capital x2 we have defined mole ratio and ls out also because it will be same x1 y1 y2 okay so that's the simple material balance you can make to the suppose here in middle section or where in a particular section where the gas leaving this section has the composition mole ratio capital y and the liquid that is about to enter it it has the composition capital x so in this expression y1 and x1 will remain same but a y2 and x2 will be just our 
y and x because the same thing what we have done we have in first case we have then the overall material balance now we're gonna do it for just a section so y2 and x2 will be capital y and capital x which will incorporate which will be for like any stage over here okay so let's do it okay so it will be we have replaced y2 and x2 with y and x to find the general expression to see how the small ratio is changing it from every stage okay how it's changing we have to find the operating line so, okay so to find this we are doing this now what you have to do is you have to rearrange it as i'm saying so divide this gs over here so it will become ls upon gs now rearrange it multiply with minus sign and rearrange it and you will get this equation yes i hope you have reached to this conclusion so y capital y here and it is related to the x over here and ls upon gs and plus this constant okay so it is just a constant so what is it it's a straight line is y equal to mx plus c that is our operating line okay guys so we have our operating line so if we draw it okay so we will get something like this okay so this y equal to mx plus c depending upon the slope it will get changed but the general idea and what is it this is an equilibrium line so there is equilibrium relation with of the absorption that how the ammonia and uh, will be soluble in the liquid so there is equilibrium relation which will be given by many equilibrium rules so suppose we are assuming over here that the equilibrium line is straight and in absorption problems you will see the straight equilibrium line only okay so don't worry so they will give you that equilibrium relation is y star equal to mx and operating line is y equal to m dash x like that plus c okay they will give you like this this is our operating line which we have just derived and this is our equilibrium relationship which will be given so, okay so when such of things these types of curves are really important and if you learn how to an analyze these curves and how to analyze this graph then you can definitely be pro you can become pro in that option okay now look at this curve and tell me that which is the bottom side and which is the top side out of these two which is the top composition and which is the bottom composition okay so we know that uh, from top to the bottom from side 2 to 1 the liquid is absorbing so the liquid composition should be should get higher so the higher so here the liquid composition is higher so this side should be the bottom side and this should be x1 because it's end we are getting x so if it is x1 then it should be x2 okay if you see for the gas what is happening in the gas okay so the gas will so it is our bottom side so at the bottom the gas is have high mole ratio so here will be your y1 and here will be your y2 so it's easy first you define for the gas uh, sorry the liquid and then if for x1 here will be y1 and for x2 it will be y2 so that's how you can do it now again uh, so when you have this curve you can find out uh, the number of stages required and all that so what happens actually that uh, first we reach to the equilibrium line and uh, from this is called as tie line and that's how we go from here to here here to here like that and that's how we go so we have two slopes over here which which is one is the slope of operating line and another one is the slope of equilibrium line and uh, what is the slope of operating line uh, so this is ls upon gs what is it slope of operating line okay so this is slope of operating line ls upon gs and the slope of equi equilibrium line is suppose m okay slope of equilibrium line okay. 
equilibrium line is slope L M so here we define one very important uh, factor which is absorption factor okay and the absorption factor is defined as the slope of operating line divided by the slope of equilibrium line so ls upon g is divided by m and uh, this is the absorption factor okay now that's very important here also so many things we have to do it with it so what is what will happen that if absorption is get factor is greater than one means this type this type of curve will be there so what you see over here that uh, when we go for these absorption from top to bottom we see that the mass transfer driving force which is the difference between these two things is increasing which is good so more driving force more will be the mass transfer rate and uh, but what will happen if it just less than one then in this case here your equilibrium line and your operating line will try to touch it and more it will become closer more will be required the number of stretches will be required more and the mass transfer driving force is decreasing so from here the mass transfer driving force is that much from from here to here you will see uh, seeing that the driving force is decreasing which is not a good thing so we should maintain a absorption factor more than one for absorption okay and what will what will if it is one miss both lines of parallel slopes are same so nothing like same driving force so these three cases